Hi everyone, this is Podcast of Bonita. I'm Rachel. And I'm Shirley. And we're fucking back. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a minute, bitches. Um, and we're here, uh, not unfortunately, but we are here to do our uh, very special personal worst episodes of South Park. And disclaimer, because I'm going to have to give a, give a disclaimer because opinions. Um, your favorite episode might be on this list. Who knows? It, but we don't fucking care because it's our list and we're going to put the episodes that we don't like. Yeah, and list. and your least favorite episodes might also not be on it, but also our someone else's top ten worst is always going to be different than yours, so just got to deal with it. <laughs> oh, yeah, but there are definitely going to be some on here that the majority agree with and probably a few that the majority disagree with. But, um... Yeah, we, uh, like we said, it's our personal list, um, and if you want, comment down your least favorites, if we don't mention them, comment down your least favorites, and there are probably some favorites of ours that you guys hate, so, um, uh, just a little disclaimer, and also another thing, it, we love South Park, you know, we, we love this, this is not Flaming South Park, it's still our favorite show, we wouldn't do this podcast if it wasn't. So this isn't any harsh feelings towards the show in general. These are just some flubs that we found in what usually is a treasure. So um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into number 10. The Return of Chef. This episode feels sloppy and thrown together in a rush, probably because it was. It feels obvious that Matt and Trey had to make up some ridiculous plot to get rid of Chef, and they couldn't have picked a stupider way to do it. The episode starts by telling a chef has gone away for a long time and he's now back, which gives the characters an emotional reaction to his return, but leaves us as the audience feeling kind of hollow and empty. The <laughs> town is quickly, understandably disgusted when Chef begins trying to molest young boys, and the reason is due to a lame super adventure club that is a cover-up for child molestation and brainwashing. Chef ends up dying, once again giving the characters an emotional response while the audience just feels worded out and kind of sad. I understand that this episode was meant to quickly get rid of Chef's character after the Isaac Hayes incident, and Matt and Trey had to think fast, but the episode is a disappointment to me all around. The splicing of Isaac's voice to make Chef's brainwashed dialogue was really clever, but I can't help but think they could have come up, they could have come up with a better story to explain all this. Chef was a beloved character for years, to the boys and to fans too, and I don't see why they had to ruin him and give him the world's shittiest send-off. The only saving grace of this episode for me it's Kyle's speech at the end about remembering Chef before he was brainwashed, but it's not nearly enough to save this really bad episode. So, quick disclaimer, again, um, <laughs> Rachel wrote these amazing analyses, um, and that's what we're reading to you to get our basic thoughts, and then we just kind of discuss them. But I don't hate this episode that much. <laughs> I know that, that may sound like we hate this a lot, but this is why it's only number 10. My biggest problem with this episode is just it feels very bitter. It's it's very bitter. And usually South Park isn't bitter. South Park usually tries to take a lighthearted approach on, like, any issue. And, of course, I, I know that they felt really upset that Isaac Hayes left the show. But the way that they get rid of Chef graphically and kind of make him out to be a child molester, even though a lot of it's funny and it is, it is an allegory to Scientology, it the way they do it, and the way they do Chef's death at the end is just a little petty for my taste. I agree. I think that it's bitter, but mo I kind of my big issue, like I said earlier, is that I just don't think any way they handled this is, like, they didn't do it well at all. I felt like, like, this fact that they were like, oh, well, Chef left, but we never saw it, and now he's back. And it's like, how, why are we, the audience, supposed to feel this emotional thing that the characters feel? It's, like, not the same at all. Um, and then he's a molestation, he's, like, molest kids now. And it just, like you said, it feels very bitter. It feels like they're trying to ruin Chef a little bit. And it's just very disappointing to watch after loving Chef for years and years. But again, this episode does have some genuine laughs. The allegory is fairly, fairly clever. And Kyle's speech at the end is very memorable and almost makes up for the mistakes. Almost. But that's why it's on our list. But only at number 10. So I think we'll move on to number 9. The City on the Edge of Forever, a.k.a. Flashbacks. This is considered the Flashbacks episode, and like most other Flashback episodes, it sucks. The children are stuck on a bus balancing off the edge of a cliff, and all 
that happens to them is uh, they misremember events in old episodes while a monster lurks outside. The callbacks to earlier episodes are wrong, unnecess unnecessary, and the ice cream joke gets old very fast. The children have no agency and no story in this episode. They simply fall into a dull pattern of freaking out and wondering how they got into all other out of all other bad situations. The other plot line isn't much better. Miss Crabtree becomes a stand-up comedian and finds love, but neither her comedy nor her story is funny at all. She is a side character that doesn't shine, and it actually feels like a relief rather than a cop-out at the end when we discover everything was a dream. I actually, so, sorry, I actually almost feel bad for like putting like a season two episode on the list because like they're all bad, but <laughs> this one is just it rubs me the wrong way because one, they did the flashback episode like way too early, and two, like like I said, like nothing happens in this episode at all. Like it ends up being just a dream, and then Miss Crabtree is just off being a comedian for no reason, and the kids just hang out on a bus for twenty minutes, and then that's all that happens. Like there's no character development, nothing, nothing happens. And that's exactly the reason why this isn't on many uh, worst episodes of South Park lists, because it's so forgettable. But we remembered it enough and hated it enough <laughs> to put it on this list. But um, there's really, exactly, exactly, there's not much to say about it. It's forgettable. It's too early to have um, a flashbacks episode. At least The Simpsons, when they had a flashback episode, they waited a few seasons before they did it. Right. So I and they know. at least had memorable moments prior <laughs> to do yeah, I guess you could thing. argue that Matt and Troy did it early on purpose, and that's, like, the joke, but it just didn't work for me. It didn't work. Um, and, of course, that's why it's on our list. Um, and another one that's on our list is going to be number eight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Funny bot. <laughs> this episode has no major offensive qualities or bad storytelling, but it's on the list because it's simply unfunny. Much like Miss Crabtree, Funny Bot is extremely unfunny, and the uproarious positive reaction from the rest of the world feels annoying and contrived. Funny Bot takes up most of the episode, which is a shame, but even the other parts aren't, aren't that impressive. Jimmy's comedy award show and Cartman's many Holocaust jokes involving Kyle and the Germans are stale and unfunny to me. The only funny scene here is the end, where Tyler Perry gets locked away rather than Funny Bot, because the twist ending actually works, even if it comes out of nowhere. Yeah, and um, fun fact, this is also one of the lowest rated episodes um, ratings wise of South Park of all time, so we're not wrong for putting it on this list. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it doesn't really, um, it's not offensive, you know, there's nothing offensive about it, it's not something that gets us angry, it's just something that's boring. And if you're going to be boring, don't be on South Park, because South Park is arguably never really a boring show. Exactly. I don't think I, for a minute, like, regret putting this on there, because I don't remember ever watching an episode of South Park, like I watched this one, and then being like, what a fucking dud, this was so stupid, I didn't laugh one time, and I was just all around just, like, almost disgusted at how un unfunny it was. I was, like, really <laughs> upset going away from this episode, how dumb it was. And maybe the only thing that's got a slight chortle out of me was the Tyler Perry stuff, and yeah. it, it ended fine. The conclusion was fine, but all around, just another forgettable episode that's just painfully unfunny. Mm -hmm. Ironic, because the title of the episode is Funny Bot. Right. <laughs> so we'll move on to number seven, which is Douche and Turd. Okay, put your, put your firearms down. We have reasons. <laughs> we have reasons, okay. Douche and Turd, this is possibly the most controversial episode on this list because, technically speaking, it is not a bad episode. It has many funny scenes, great satire of PETA and Puff Daddy, and the entire concept of Douche and Turd as political candidates is spot-on and hilarious. Its placement on its list is due to the personal bias and disagreement with its message. The entire episode preaches this ideal that voting doesn't matter, your voice doesn't make a difference, and it's easier to do nothing and laugh at people who are, stay, who are saying vote or die. The episode is meant to be a mockery of people who are in too intense about voting, and it succeeds in that respect, but the counter message it gives out is the shining example of a problem in South Park. So often the show is content in just sitting back and make fun, of this, uh, make fun and stress that caring is stupid. According to Douche and Turd, you're better off letting other people change the world and laughing at them for caring too much. Okay. So and if you watched our season eight 
um, episode of Podcast of Bonita, you'll know our personal bias, and we had an entire discussion on our personal bias that voting doesn't matter, as stated in the episode, Dishon Turd. Yeah, and you might, I like it, Shirley said earlier, like, put down your pitchforks and firearms and everything, because I know this is a blowout episode, and I get why, because it is technically a good episode. And I, I mean, but I really don't care that it's on the list because you could say that, well, this is only supposed to be episodes that you thought are bad, but it, I thought it was bad for different reasons besides it not being funny. So I think that in my personal reason, it, is, it does belong in the list and I'm not going to apologize for putting it there. <laughs> yeah, and especially considering the fact we actually moved it before we recorded, we moved it from a lower position on the list up to number seven. Because, in all honesty, it's not a bad episode. It's nowhere near like a funny bot or some of the other ones on this list where the plot lines are bad. It's just the message we have an extreme difficulty with because it just kind of promotes this lazy conservatism and everything. This lackadaisical and apathetic attitude that caring is stupid and you should not care about your political climate or anything. You know? And that might just that's just our personal take from the episode. That's how we felt about it. And if you want to know a little bit more about how we feel the episode, go ahead and watch our season eight podcast. Um, but that, it, it's, it's not super low on this list for the reason, because the penis stuff is funny. The voter die motherfucker song is, is really great. It's just the counterintuitive message that right. we have an issue with. Yeah. I really like not to go on about it, but I really, really hate the message. Just because, like I said, I hate the, the message that's saying, like, caring is stupid. And it's really just saying that you can just sit back and not do anything politically. But you were more than welcome to make fun of other people for doing it and make fun of everything that's happening, even though you did nothing to contribute to it. And I will admit, I'm, I'm kind of like the voter die people that they're making fun of. Because, in my opinion, if you don't vote, you don't get to make fun of or have any say in what's going on if you don't at least try to change the world and do something. Exactly. And that's just our personal thing, uh, but it's it's not something that's going to keep us from watching the show, obviously. Right. So, anyway, we're getting off our high horse and <laughs> hopefully not meeting any firearms on our way down. <laughs> and so we'll move on to number six, Pip. One of the one of the show's least interesting characters gets his own episode, and it's no surprise that it is not good. The episode is a parody of Great Expectations and tell, and talks about Pip's life in England before he moved to South Park. It's no surprise that the episodes surrounding the four main boys are the best, so if the show decides to take that focus away, I think the episode better be damn good to make up for it, and needless to say, this one is not. Pip as a character is not very funny, and neither is Estella, no matter how many baby bunnies she kills. The ending veers greatly away from the Great Expectations parody, and more importantly, it doesn't at all show how, fi how Pip got from England to South Park. It doesn't answer any questions that we didn't have about Pip, because we don't care. It only makes us that much more disinterested in him. Yeah, ditto. Basically, <laughs> uh, this should not be a surprise to really any fan of South Park because this is also another one that's precariously on uh, worse rated lists. Um, and for good reason. For very good reason. It's it's just not funny. It's it's boring, and and we're all, like we said, we're all for South Park doing new and interesting things. They just have to be new and interesting, <laughs> and Great Expectations in the style of South Park was neither, so uh, sorry, but this should not be a surprise to anybody. I really don't have anything else to say besides what I think this episode was dumb, it was bad. I don't want to think about it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, from 10 to 6, these are just episodes that we kind of just dislike, you know? It's, it's actually hard to fill up a top ten list of hated episodes because we don't hate South Park. <laughs> the majority of the episodes are good. But from five on to number one, get ready for some... Get ready, get the bonfire ready because we're going to be yeah. roasting. Get ready for some hate. Episodes, okay? <laughs> and let's go ahead and start the roast with number five, a million little fibers oh y'all should know my opinion about this one <laughs> like pip the episode focuses on a side character rather than the main boys and doesn't fare well the episode centers around towley who is dubbed the worst character ever by cartman towley can be funny in small doses but uh, an entire towley episode especially an unfunny one makes him lose his charm uh even worse gary the asshole and minge and minge are 
major characters throughout this episode, and everything about them is stupid. Rather than focusing on Oprah and her feud with Towley, the episode shows us how her vagina and asshole are in a dry spell due to her being overworked. The episode tries to make them funny and fails spectacularly, and the tragic ending is weird instead of sad. So, oh, this episode, y'all, this episode, again, is, I actually think it's tied um, with Funny Bot for the lowest rated episode of South Park. So it has damn good reason to be on this list. A lot of people don't like it, and that they are totally right for not liking it. <laughs> it's, it's just an episode that falls flat. It's not memorable. And the whole thing with the minge and the asshole, it, 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 it's not funny. Like, at no point do I laugh in this entire episode. And I've watched it a few times. I've tried giving it the benefit of the doubt, and it's just not funny. It's not funny. And even as somebody who loves Towley and all his other iterations in the show, it's, it's not funny. And that's the worst crime South Park can possibly commit, is not being funny. I think the worst part for me is that I felt like they were trying to make, like, the asshole and the minge, like, so funny and have, like, this real arc. But I just didn't care about any of it, and clearly no one else did either, because everyone hates this episode, so. (laughs) And the thing is, it might have been a little bit funnier if the whole minge and asshole thing wasn't a still frame on Oprah's like a close-up of Oprah's pants like that's all it is Mm -hmm. and all you hear are these background voices and it it's just painfully unfunny maybe if there was some movement which maybe the censors didn't allow (laughs) if there was some movement it might have been a little bit more passable but still the entire plot line of this episode the um a million little uh pieces I I have the book that it's parroting and the whole event that it's parroting is not memorable. Nobody remembers it, so nobody remembers this episode either. Mm-hmm. Except for remembering how much they hate it. Right. <laughs> so, I think we'll move on to number four. The China Problem. This episode lands itself on the list out of pure offensiveness and tastelessness. The storyline where Cartman and Butters dress up as horribly offensive Asian stereotypes and hold people hostage is actually not why it's on the list, because I think that storyline is funny because it does offensiveness in the right way. It shows the boys' racism, accidental on Butter's part, but not on Carmen's. It shows it as wrong and as an example of their stupidity in the whole situation. More importantly, the storyline is funny, especially with the running gag about not shooting people in the dick. The cringeworthy Indiana Jones storyline is what got this episode on the list because of how poorly and offensively it was handled, especially in comparison to how well the storyline, the other storyline in this episode was handled. The boys are upset after claiming they saw a friend raped, and this gimmick is played out for a while until it's revealed that the raped friend was Indiana Jones, and they're actually talking about how bad his most recent movie was. The comparison between witnessing a friend's rape and seeing a bad movie is shockingly stupid and an offensive reach. To make things worse, the extensive and graphic scenes of Indiana Jones being raped by the directors of his movie are uncomfortable and hard to watch. Matt and Trey, just say you thought the movie was bad and go. Don't turn it into a whole really bad rape storyline. Yeah, you pulled a season 20, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) I know this is before season 20, but I mean, they didn't learn their lesson here and continued doing it with the women are funny, get over it Mm -hmm. Um, joke. Yeah, the thing is, like like our analysis said, um, we don't have a problem with the actual China problem. We have a a problem issue with the second storyline, which tries to compare a bad movie to a graphic rape scene and it's not funny I I get it feels like cheap shock humor it almost feels like family guy level of shock humor and that is kind of unforgivable (laughs) in my opinion Mm -hmm. and like I said last time uh, we, we talked about this episode in detail as well on our season 12 podcast um it, it, you, you just can't really compare apples and oranges, okay? A bad movie is not an equivalent of rape. Trust me. Like, it's, it's fucking not. And there's a way to joke about it. This is not the right way. Mm-hmm. And at no point is it enjoyable to watch. And no, we don't, the, I, 
as an audience member, I don't relate to Matt and Trey, honestly. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe, maybe it's because I'm not huge on Indiana Jones. Maybe if I liked Indiana Jones, I'd like this episode, but I'm, I'm doubting I would. Um, basically, okay, the whole premise of this storyline is, like, bad to begin with, but what makes it worse is that they just will not let it go. Like, they have, I don't know, I don't know how many scenes they show of Indiana Jones getting raped in this fucking episode. There's so many. It's like, just hearing him scream and just go on forever and ever. They just, it's not funny, it's gross to watch, and they just will not stop showing it. It's like, ugh, it's horrible. It, exactly. It's it's not enjoyable to watch at all. And a rape scene shouldn't be regardless. But the fact that you have to put a rape scene in an episode just seems really stupid and a poor analogy and a poor use of quote unquote humor. So sorry, Matt and Trey, this is a fail. And that's why it's number four on this list. And speaking of number four, let's go on to number three, which is safe space. This episode, again, Put down your pitchforks. I know a lot of people like this episode, but we're also going to get... It kind of falls in the rut of Douche and Turd, where we disagree with its message, okay? So this episode suffers from both an unfunny story and an unsatisfying message. Every storyline, from Randy's feud with the Whole Foods cashier to Butters being forced to edit social media comments, has potential, but is executed poorly. Rather than use, uh, rather than use Butters as a message about the nastiness of online bullying, his suffering is an afterthought here, which is frustrating when trivial white people problems like Cartman's and Randy's are portrayed as real issues. The, es the episode tries to tell the audience that harassment online is inevitable and that victims only have themselves to blame for using social media and getting their feelings hurt. It's unsettling to see South Park actively take the side, uh, actively take a side of a bully and giving out a message of the world is mean, get over it. Despite its crudeness, South Park has never been nasty, and uh, and it hurts to see that here. So, basically, our main issue is I I know that they're trying to say in this episode that. You're, the internet is not your safe space, which is a message that I completely and totally agree with. You can't expect the internet, this public place where people you don't even know have access to, you know, pictures of you and can, you know, make comments about you publicly. You can't just expect it to all of a sudden be nice because it won't. But at the same time, you should also condemn the people who are assholes, just to be assholes, you know? And the whole idea of don't post pictures of yourself online because people are going to be mean is kind of destructive. Why let the internet only be for people who are going to be nasty? You know? It's not necessarily about... And I know the, uh, the message is supposed to be don't expect it, but the message kind of turns into just don't try and fight it either. Right. And that's what we have an issue with. And another thing is, this episode, but minus maybe the Safe Space song and a few other lines here and there, it's just not that funny. It's really not that funny of an episode. Like, I don't find myself laughing. I think the Randy Whole Foods joke is really stupid. I think the African Kid commercial, you know, joke redone over and over isn't funny. <laughs> it's just not that clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree with everything you said. Um, the message itself, specifically, is why I hate it, because it's just really bad. I hate that, because they are very clearly taking the side of, like, bullies in this episode, which makes me sad, because, like we said, South Park has always been, like, crude, and it, like, makes fun of people, but, I don't know, I've never thought of them as bullies, and it seemed like they were, like, kind of taking that side here, which is, isn't nice. It's just, I don't know what it is about the internet that makes people, like, like be more mean or th think it's okay to be mean it's like I don't know like if you went like if your kid went to school in like a dumb shirt and then people like made fun of them for it like in no way would you ever like stick up for the kids who are being bullies like you wouldn't be like well don't wear clothes don't go to school like that <laughs> that's just so stupid but it feels like that's what Matt and Trey are doing here they're like don't have any fun online ever because you're gonna get bullied and it's your fault basically so I don't know it was stupid it was stupid I appreciate the message they're trying to make, not a huge fan of the message that actually comes across. Right. And 
That's why it's number three on our list, and then we'll move on to number two. Mr. Garrison's fancy new vagina. This episode... Y'all should not be mad about this one. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, from what we've seen, they, they probably won't be. This good. episode is most often put on lists of the worst South Park episodes, and for good reason. The openly transphobic message is horrible on its own and made even worse by the lazy crude jokes all throughout. The episode starts out promising when Sheila gives Kyle a nice speech about how transgender people want to change their outside appearance to fit who they are on the inside. However, the rest of the episode rips away the sweet moment by twisting it into a message that, that's ridiculous and hateful. The episode is mocks Sheila's reasoning of, of trans people transitioning by letting Kyle and, and Gerald transition into a grotesque attempt at a dolphin and a black person for stupid reasons. Not only is this episode transphobic and mean, but there isn't an ounce of cleverness in any of the jokes. They all boil down to, ew, look at how gross trans people are. And it feels like Matt and Chair are just pointing their fingers at the freaks and laughing without offering any real insight. Now, before everybody jumps on and says, oh, but the sissy, we totally agree. The sissy is an excellent episode and really does show um, the um, opinionated evolution that Matt and Trey have gone through. You know, they really have evolved in their thoughts and opinions on trans people and have become more accepting. But it doesn't excuse this episode. It, it shows a learning curve and a learning process and um, being more open-minded and accepting, but it, this episode is still gutter trash. And it's, it, even people who, um, even people who don't really focus much on the trans issues in this episode don't like it because it's just kind of uncomfortable. It's, it's just uncomfortable to watch. They're cheap jokes and it just feels mean-spirited. Like, um, like we had stated, uh, with safe space, it just feels mean spirited and vicious instead of being lighthearted and, you know, kind of topical like South Park usually is. It's not, it, South Park shouldn't be bitter and hateful, but it kind of feels that way in this episode. Right. Because I know that South Park is famous for making fun of everybody, but I don't know. Even the way they do it, like, with gay people or whatever, like, they make fun of them, but they're very clearly, like, on the... They're very clearly pro-gay pro in their episodes. So this episode was just such a shock to see them be so nasty and anti-trans, because that's never been the impression I got from watching South Park, that they were against the LGBT community. It was really disappointing. So obviously it's very glad to have the sissy to... Because it's a great episode and to show that they've changed, but this episode still sucks and it's not redeemed by the sissy. <laughs> It's not redeemed at all. And before we get into number one, we did want to mention some honorable, dishonorable mentions um, that we didn't put on this list because, like we said, it's our fucking list and we didn't have to. <laughs> one episode that's on this list a lot, on these types of lists, is um, Terrence and Philip, Not Without My Anus. Um, and if you know anything about Rachel and I, you would know that we love that episode a lot. I we actually it. are like Matt and Trey on this one and we think it's really fucking funny. But I guess our, I guess we feel that way because we weren't w actively watching South Park because we were a year old. <laughs> we weren't actively watching South Park at the time that it aired. So it might have a deeper, more personal um, pain <laughs> towards those who did watch it uh, around that time that it aired. So, sorry, it's not going to be on this list because we actually like it and we actually think it's really fucking funny. <laughs> yeah, I love that one. Um, Another... Honorable or dishonorable mention is Jack Officers, I think it's called. I guess people put that one on their list a lot because of the fact that the Jack Officers themselves are so annoying. And they are, I agree, but I don't agree with putting it on a list because of the fact that them being annoying is like the whole point of the episode and it feels like y'all miss that, but whatever. <laughs> In no way is it one of our favorites, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, okay. it, it's not, uh, we don't think it's worthy of being on this list. And then the last one uh, that we're going to discuss is uh, Stanley's Cup. That's usually put on the list because it is a little intense. It's a little um, disheartening. If anybody knows um, the ending, it's it's not a happy one. Um, but like we said, it's it's not offensive enough, or it, it's at least funny. You know, we we find that episode funny in most aspects. It's it's doesn't really bother us, so that's why it's not put on this list. All right, now let's go into... other episodes we hate more, so, I mean, <laughs> like, number one. Oh, boy, and y'all should, should know what this one is. 
Number one is the end of serialization as we know it. This is our absolute least favorite episode of South Park because it serves as a piss poor finale for season 20, which had already begun to become piss poor. The unsatisfying conclusion to the 10 episode story arc fell flat because it was too concerned with setting things up to reset for next season. None of the storylines for this season are wrapped up in a satisfying or interesting way, and some of the storylines, such as Member Berries and the Boys vs. Girls War, aren't drop, are dropped completely and aren't wrapped up at all. However, by far, the worst part of the episode is Gerald getting away with his despicable behavior after spending an entire season being built as a villain. Ending the season on Gerald screaming, What I do is fucking funny, bitch and then hugging his oblivious wife feels like a slap in the face as South Park not only fails to punish its season-long villain, but appears to have agreed with his actions, which is something that South Park has never really done before. They've always punished their villains, and they've failed to do so uh, this, se this episode. The episode feels rushed and has a thank God it's over with, uh, that's over with vibe that threatens to taint the rest of the season. Yeah, that's just putting it fucking nicely, okay? <laughs> we could go on and on about how much we hate this episode. And to be clear, uh, Rachel and I don't hate all of season 20. But this episode, it's number one, so you gotta know, we hate it a lot. I think the reason we hate it so much is because we were part of that demographic that really loved season 20 for a long time, and we felt like we were defending it to a lot of people even when it was slowly going downhill at the end. And then this fucking episode aired, and I felt like a chump for defending the whole season. Because I felt like this ruined the whole season. And then all the shit just went down the drain, and nothing got resolved. And I felt... It, was really, it really was a slap in the face. And I just hate this episode. It was so bad. They weren't even trying. And it honestly betrays the entire message of South Park as a whole. Like, with Cartman and everything. Cartman is kind of always the villain. He's always in the position of the villain. But the key to having a good villain and having such a despicable character doing awful things is to never let them win. Mm -hmm. Cartman is still generally a likable character because he gets punished for all of the actions and poor things that he does. He doesn't get to win in the end. And even when he does, it's not on a serious issue. Gerald caused deaths. Gerald became increasingly despicable and just unlikable. Nobody liked this character by the end, and everybody was waiting for him to get his comeuppance, and because he didn't get those comeuppance, everybody fucking hates this episode, and for good-ass reason, because it just feels like a slap in the face as a viewer. Not and only that... Was not punished, and we feel robbed. Yeah, not only that, but the character as Gerald is totally ruined now, just because of the fact that he didn't have any comeuppance, he got away with it. Every Everybody that I talk to about this hates Gerald now. There's no going back from this. We're going to hate him forever. We look at him in old episodes and we hate him now. Like <laughs> He's just ruined. Like He's ruined in the way that Carmen is not ruined because they knew how to handle Carmen as a character and they didn't do it here and now everyone hates Gerald. And that's what happens, you know. And what, what thing is promising is that Matt and Trey realize that the season 20 um, finale is a big garbage fire of awful um that's unfortunate but hopefully it's enough motivation for them to improve for season 21 and maybe fucking kill gerald like <laughs> i wouldn't even that's how bad he is as a character i would not even care if they just killed him off and brought him out of the story i would not care at all exactly um, right that's how much they've ruined him <laughs> well that was our ruined him and how bad of an episode this is yeah. well that was our top 10 list I don't know how much you agreed or disagreed, but here you go. Comment below what you thought. We look forward to hearing what you think. Yep. Yeah, um, just maybe not. Just maybe uh, put the pitchforks down for a little bit. <laughs> um, warn us. Give us bulletproof vests or a ten-minute or a ten-second head start before you come chasing after us. <laughs> <laughs> but um, let us know uh, what other episodes like we might have missed or what you think. Uh, belongs on this list. Um, we'd totally love to hear it. Give us suggestions um, on episodes that you'd like to see in the future. And uh, we thank you guys a lot for listening. This is our top 10 
Um, and we hope to talk to you guys and set up another podcast really soon. Bye, guys. We Bye. Thanks.